you know, I, I don't know what. It so, doesn't, doesn't matter. They haven't gotten one nine out of the last 10 years. So. Well, but I, and, I, want, and, I want to bring up your comment, Councilman Bettinger, last month when we got our, our uh, expenditures, our up-to-date expenditures, and you, you brought up, boy, it's a good thing we didn't cut back any more in this budget because, look, we came right in on a dime here. You, you, not those exact words, but you're saying, look how tight we were this year. There was nothing wasted. It's a good thing we, we didn't try and cut back. And that was part of the discussion when we had talked about in September, do we want to reduce any of these like, expenditures from what we anticipated? And uh, we chose not to. And you said, it's a good thing we didn't because look, we're right on the money this year. But a part of that was we spent quite a bit of money that was, we didn't budget it for as well. Yeah. If you look at this, what we put into this building, that, none of that was budgeted for. Yeah, and we have a lot of carryover. It, it, we had you're, you're going a different road. You're talking. That doesn't have nothing to do with the budget. No, that's another, that's a totally no, separate thing. Yes. No, but I'm saying a lot of money that we didn't budget it for for things. So you can't, you're not. Minnesota, it's nice to have furnaces in buildings like this, other buildings. When, when that expenditure was proposed, Councilmember Bryan, if I recall, went back and looked and said, here's monies that came in last year that, that were one time uh, revenues that um, weren't allocated for anything else. But if you go back to that whole argument, I made the specific point where we spent probably $4,000 more than we should have because we didn't go out to another vendor. We let one vendor come in dollars less. And we didn't even look at them or go back. We need to set a specific date in stone mm -hmm. where we look at it. If we would have given them an increase, well, we would have if we went to had to spend that. So no, again, how are we going to handle those? And what's, what's the contingency for that? And I agree with you. And this is because we have, fits into the budget. It's it's a simple request. I'm asking I'm asking what makes sense of a public facility. No other close supervision. How are we going to staff it somehow? I was asking the question, are we going to staff it? What do other people do? Is anybody around to say, no, we have a warming house, whether large or small, and we don't ever put anybody in there, it's just open to the public. You know, if we're doing that, should we do it like we do a pavilion? Rent it out, come get a key, and be responsible for its opening and closing and its maintenance. And other than that, I'm just saying to me it makes sense if you're going to open a public facility that the city uh, bears some responsibility for, not one person. So how propose? Go next step. <coughs> or do I need to do an RCA? We already said that once the reviews were... You guys want an RCA for everything, except when you don't want one. When we are dealing with the taxpayers' dollars... That and technically, Mary, anything that we do and talk about is dealing with taxpayers' money. Well, what date do we want these to be done by? Can we come to a consensus? When you say these being done by? The employee mm -hmm. reviews. The hard copies getting into? To Corey. To Corey. Well, whatever day we have to have information in for the workshop, in my opinion. Okay. So what, the Thursday before? So the uh, 4th of January. Should have been before that, so she has time to compile the information. Well, yeah, we need to compile it, and then Joe needs to review his, and I need to review mine, mm -hmm. and get to comment on them. Yeah, if we want to discuss them at the workshop. Because in my opinion, the point would be to have them done prior to so we can discuss them at the workshop. Would somebody throw out a date then? I, I would ask that it be the, the end of December. I have um, another surgery scheduled for a week from today. So we'll be out again for the 28th. The date. 28th. 
that would work for me. So I would move that December 28th, that we have the information by end of business, December 28th, uh, to Corey. <coughs> second. No second. If they were done by the 28th, would that give staff enough time? Those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Last item. Approve advertising for deputy clerk position. Corey, you had said one of the big things you will we're requesting was at what rate we were proposing in addition to uh, the process I believe needs to be discussed. ask council at this time if we take the opportunity to look at the structure of the office and um, look at what positions do we need and um, and determine the functions of those I, I would like to see us go to an administrator um, I see us over and over talking about the same things. We've had these conversations tonight talking about the same things over and over and over. Um, and I believe an administrator would assist us in, in allowing for that not to happen. They would keep us on track. Um, They're looking at the bigger picture. Um, we, we have expended funds for things that should have been um, part of an existing employee's responsibility. Um, because it wasn't done, um, we had to expend funds, and I'm talking about our building inventory. That is something we should have had on file. We should have known where our buildings sit as far as um, the numbers, what's there, what needs to be fixed. Um, and, and I believe an administrator can help us look at that big picture as to um, where, we, where we need to go, how we need to operate, and so that we are operating more efficiently, um, that there are goals and objectives um, set for employees, and that then those goals and objectives are met. Um, so I would like to look at um, bringing in an administrator um, and then looking at what their responsibilities would be what the city clerk responsibility would be, a deputy clerk, what that responsibility would be. Would there be less responsibility of the deputy clerk, uh, more general office administration so that that salary would maybe be lower? Um, in a maintenance supervisor, that would just, you know, what is their responsibility? They would take direct direction from the administrator. Um, We'd have work plans. We would have um, 
a, a smoother running operation. I, you know, to me, and I, I know... What? In your opinion. Okay. Um, I know, Councilman Rickard, you're not going to like this, but, you know, the, the skating rink. Here we are in December talking about things that a maintenance supervisor who's responsible for a hockey rink should have had a plan laid out for it. And, and we didn't. And so... We are now talking about a uh, warming house, we're talking about electrical, we're talking signs. Those things should have already all been set out for us. Um, the budget associated with the hockey rink, we, we agreed to spend up to $7,500 from existing park funds. That means that $7,500 isn't gonna go somewhere else. We spent 20 whatever, 25 on the, on the boards, that means that 25 isn't somewhere else. Um, with, it, you know, if it was 23, five, whatever the final number ended up being. Um, but we don't have anybody looking at our big picture. And, and I think that's wrong. And I think looking, um, having somebody looking at that big picture and, and having um, some goals and objectives for our staff um, I think that we as a city would operate better um, than, than we currently do. You know, our maintenance supervisor asked for an employee um, to just do graveling of the roads. Well, I look at the time cards, and when I looked at the time cards, that employee who was hired only for graveling roads spent just about as many hours doing everything else. Well, where was that ever brought back to council to say, well, now I need twice as much money for salary because I'm going to have them do all this other stuff. The, the, we don't have that big picture overview. And I think that that is, um, is, is a detriment to the, to the city. Um, I, I think that it will lead us down a path that we don't want to go down. Um, we're not, you know, we are a small town. We want to stay small town. Um, but you also have to have some guidelines. You have to have some policies and procedures. And you have to do things the right way. Um, if you want to go back to the good old boy network. Let me, let me cut you short. Oh, I'll a second here. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. I don't even know what the heck the original motion was. Yeah. Well, I really well, wasn't asking for motion. I was asking for council to consider looking at where do we want to go. Well, you saw the uproar when the administrator issue came up before, and you're talking about cost. You, you know, you're adding $150,000 salary to a budget that we're already scrapped on, and then adding additional oh, staff to that. More than 3%. Yeah, it's a lot more than 3%. And, and, and you, so, again, you have to admit, me, when that, me, when that topic came up, well, just one thing. When that topic came up originally, this place was packed. And it's never been like that before. Well, and so Councilmember so Rickard, it was packed based on the fact that a, that a a flyer went out that well, had let's, wrong let's information on. So, before but, yeah. this gets out of hand yeah. here, you're you're suggesting that the, the question before before us is the posting of a position for for deputy clerk, and you you. You got around to this saying you'd like to see the overall responsibilities evaluated to see what the the true responsibilities of this position would be. Am I understanding that right? Okay. Now in that, and the thing I want to be very careful of is I happen to be at that meeting when we talked about administrator before, um, three years back. And we did a lot of things wrong. We didn't communicate uh, anything effectively in that. So I want to be careful that what, what I hear you asking and, and what you ask, I, I see as two different things. Um, one of the things is I think Joe gets kicked around a lot for things that he wants to do well but aren't in his strong suit. Joe does a lot of things really, really well. Um, the administrative things associated with budgeting and, and planning uh, long range on ice 
rinks and things like that. No, you know, nothing critical of Joe in that. That's not where he operates best. I agree with that. You know, he does a great job on our equipment. He does a great job on our roads. He is he's great at getting things done immediately, but his long range planning can use some assistance. There are some things that unfortunately it comes out as negative the way you say it, Councilman Rainville, um, that I'm sitting, if I'm Corey, I can feel the heat right over here. You know, because it, it impugns her reputation on how she's running things when I don't think we've made it clear what we're looking for. And if, if anything I learned from the talk of administrative uh, position before, it's not communicating clearly what we expect to be done. So I think part of the review process and, and maybe the analysis that you're looking for here as far as responsibility, Councilmember Benton just brought it up a number of times, we should look at the staffing we have and what should we have going forward. I think that should be done in a way that Corey has input to it saying, I agree those responsibilities need to be done somewhere, but it's never been my bailiwick. It's never been in my responsibility, so I'm not picking that up and taking the blame for it when it's never been my responsibility. So if, if we as a council think that should be part of Corey's responsibility, we need to clearly define that. And if that's part of, here's the review on what you've been doing, but we'd like to see this going forward, I think we should have that discussion. And then in that, if we decide there needs to be more responsibility for Corey in this position, we make that opportunity known. And Corey then has the opportunity to say, I want that or I don't want that. You know? But I think we need to be clear, Joe is very valuable to this city. But we need to help him operate in a way that he feels that way. That he doesn't feel like we're always beating up on him because he doesn't do these administrative things as well as some other public works managers do. If he's not trained in that. That's not his strong suit. He's really good at what he does, though. So let's not discourage him and disparage him because that's not what he does well. Let's build him up in what he does do well and then structure. And so if Corey needs additional help, or we as a council decide we need uh, additional responsibility for Corey's position, then let's define it. So then Corey would say, I'm buying into that. I can do that, and I want to do that, or I don't. And, and I think that, in my opinion, we should look at what type of administrative things we're asking Joe to do that really should be done by somebody else, whether it's this deputy clerk, whether it's Corey, whether it's a new position that Corey steps into, or we create. Mr. Mayor, Go ahead. in conjunction with that, and I've said it before, is what we need to do and have not done is update our city policies so that all expectations are clear. So everybody is aware of exactly what and whom is responsible for what. I know we, years ago, somebody, and I forget whom it was, but somebody was up trying to update those city policies, but it never got <coughs> done and it never got anywhere. And actually, yeah, we, we went through quite a few of them, and, and they, they did bog down there at the end of the year and never got finished. We probably have the, the original drafts still there of, of all the improvements, and we actually modeled it after the League of Minnesota Cities. They, they have a, a, a template that, that they provide for cities, and so we really were updating our city policies based on that template from the League of Minnesota Cities. Um, I, I agree we should review that. I just want to do it in a way that before we start impugning individuals because we're not content with the way things are. Being not content with how things are is different than being dissatisfied or saying people are doing a crummy job. You know, if, if we're saying we'd like to do it better, then we need to communicate. What exactly does that look like? So Corey knows going in, I signed on for what you guys agreed to or what you guys have said, or I didn't. And, and so we have buy-in, rather than say, you know, I don't, I don't understand what you want, and there, there does seem to be quite often, that's not my responsibility. Or, you know, in the case of, of, you know, I'm not sure who to talk to on some of the budget items. Quite often, we'll just defer to Corey all the time. And there's sometimes he goes, I don't know, that's Joe. You know? And so, Within an organization like this, this is their 40-hour-a-week job. It's, it's our part-time gig here. 
yeah, we should have certain expectations of what we expect staff to do, you know, what we expect the city to operate like. You know, who is accountable for the ice rink, you know, the ice surfaces, and what does that accountability look like? Who's accountable for the recycling center? You know, is that something that the liaison does? Is that something city council does? Or is somebody within the staff say, our housekeeping in the recycling area, in the parks, our, our maintenance standards on roads or buildings, these are what they are, here's how they're communicated. Then when you have a review, you say, you know what? It's been clearly defined what you're responsible for and you're doing just a bang up job. You can say, I don't know what they're doing, but I'm looking at this and the parks are here and the roads are here and the buildings are here. And gosh, you're doing a fabulous job. Or I went in, in this building the other day and, and if this is the criteria, objectively it wasn't met. Let's get back to the disposition. <laughs> I don't want to be here all night. This, this is stuff for another meeting, all this discussion and, and obviously it's going to be should be well, take, take, be taken on over budgeting because we, you know, the last time this position was open, we talked about reevaluating and doing some changes and stuff. And, and from after them discussions, it was decided this position needed to be filled. This, this person, this position is needed. Corey needs this person. It can't be a city administrator. It can't be a building inspector. It can't be a, plan, a planner. This position is needed and needs to be filled. That's what was decided last time from after the discussions. So I'd like to get back to that discussion and then move forward with that, decide what we want to, you know, when to advertise, what we want to pay, and so on and so forth. Let me, let me ask this. With the discussion of evaluating the overall responsibilities of staff, in the offices, is this a position, Corey, that could be filled by a contract person while we're figuring that other stuff out? Rather than a full-time hire to begin with. I mean, I guess yes and no, um, because then I'm training the contract person. So I'm spending how many hours con training the contract person and then we eliminate them and then all of a sudden now you make a decision to hire a full-time person and then I'm trying I, to I would, I would propose if we were going to do that, we would do a contract for hire. So what I, what I do at work is I, on, I only interview people that I would say if, if the demand stays there and, and uh, that they would be qualified and desirable for the position. It just while you're basically trying them out and you're working out the details, if it turns out the position is eliminated because of restructuring, from a contract standpoint, you can release them without any um, unemployment or anything like that. If, if it turns out this is going to be a full-time position and we need them, you have a contract for hire, you want them right away, you buy out the rest of their contract. Typically it's uh, about 12 to 16 weeks. You buy out the rest of their contract or you just pay off until it's done and then they become a full-time employee. But again, so you, would, you wouldn't hire them if they didn't look like they would be a good candidate for full time. But again, the fear there is okay, you know, and, and this is the unfortunate thing about doing it this way. You're not going to find that many people who have the experience in this particular field, you know, with dealing with the government issues and whatnot, knowing exactly what to do. So Corey's going to have a considerable amount of time that she has to invest in training this person, regardless if you hire it out or if you do a contract person. You know, again, she had a, how many, how much time into training Lori? Unfortunately, we I won't say what I want to say, but we missed an opportunity, I think, to keep her around. Um, and that's on us. You know, I'll be I'll be the first one to admit we we should have put things and done things differently so we didn't lose her. But again. I don't like the fact of necessarily contracting somebody because, again, all that time and energy you spend in, into training them and then you don't keep them around, you know, again, that puts a ton of extra burden on Corey and the other staff. Can, can I ask you, when you say you don't keep them around, why wouldn't you keep them around? Well, if you do a contract for hire, though, or... You know, contract for hire, the intention is when, when their contract is up, they're, you're looking for a full-time employee. 
but it gives you an option to say, thought this was going to work, it didn't work as well as we thought, or we restructured and changed our plans. It gives you, you know, 12 to 16 weeks to figure that out. Um, but you can I, I only hire contracts for hire that I think will be uh, full-time employees when their contract's up or if, if there's any risk of losing them, I'll buy them out early. You're, you're going to limit the, the, there's a lot of people that won't put in for that position then because the, if they know that they're going to be gone or could be gone within two or three well, yeah, months. Well, you'd have to go through an agent. If you're you're working for East Bethel, agency. you're not going to put, uh, but, apply for a job over then, here because... But if you're going through an agency, it's going to cost you a heck of a lot more money <coughs> as well. Yeah, contract for hire, there's, it's enough for They're usually cost. one and a half times what you would end up paying that employee. So it's going to cost you considerably more. And it's no different than hiring a, a full-time position and they're on probation for 90 days. They don't work. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, well, we found out, we thought just because they're on probation you let them go doesn't mean they don't get unemployment. We found out the hard way there. Yeah, it's, it's the, um, it's... Uh, typically, you know, fifty percent or better fee, and but there's they take care of all the benefits. I mean, so there is a a trade-off there that you're not paying the benefits while you're determining if this is a good fit long term. I'm just I'm asking because when we brought Lori and she didn't have the the government background. I think with the appropriate uh, business background, with the appropriate clerical background. Um, a lot of what we're asking here possibly could be done by that. And I just I wanted Corey at least to think about that. It hadn't been approached before, but no, based on what we learned from and from given Lori, that it's twenty after nine or nine ten, a meeting night, you're going to ask me to make a decision. I'm not asking to make a decision. I'm, I'm asking on a contract for hire. When we now, if I if if it doesn't appear that it's a reasonable option, then we're going to wait another month to even put a notice out for the, the position. You know, the other thing, too, you know, to consider is you look through the process that we went through last time, you know, we, we, it took a while to find somebody that we liked, and we found somebody we liked, we offered a position, they turned it down afterwards, and we had to start the process again. And again, I, I think it actually worked out best for the city. Well, maybe not in the long run, but it, it could have if, again, we would have done things right. I think, again, I'd use some different words, but we failed. And I would prefer that we don't do that again, because, again, I look at it from the picture that we're taking a lot of time, energy, and resources away from Corey to train that person. And to have to repeatedly do this every year or a couple of years is not the right thing to do. And you know, and a sad thing is, is you look at where that individual went and what that in, what she got as a pay increase should tell you a lot. So we, we need to look at that. Councilman Brian, if we're talking about restructuring roles and responsibilities, I'd hate to have to, to to hire someone now and then find out that that person doesn't necessarily fit the new roles and responsibilities. Um, I'm I'm, a, I'm kind of making an assumption that the 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 current job description hasn't changed too much from last time, but what what um, what types of things would be different with 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 a new person if they were if they were going to be full time? Are there other things that that they would be responsible for right away, or um, so that they are able to to fill that role in, in as a full time forty hour work week position, or is there uh, another way to either you know, another possibility to have someone like to have someone to work in the office to help offset the office hours as a, I don't know if you would look at uh, even a part-time temporary receptionist type of thing. Mr. Mayor. I think this is what Corey's recommending right here. 
This is what she needs. That's what she's telling us. Are we going to listen? Are we going to sit here and play games? I'm not here to play Try to rewrite the description. And try to add different responsibilities on. Here's, here's, she, she's recommending this. We got it right in front of us. Let's do it. Let's get something done. We've got to quit. And I agree. You know, this is where we start. I think, again, where we failed is we could have grown Lori's position into something more than this. And that's where we failed. Who's we? Us as a council. All I ever hear is we're, we're telling them they have too much to do. We're overburdening everybody. Mm -hmm. Well, no, no, Paul. It, I, I, I'm sorry, that's a little reactive. We don't, know, we don't know what Lori did every day. We don't know what Lori was told the opportunities to grow and, and not to grow were. I mean, if, if there was opportunity to grow this, I would have expected to hear that from you, Corey. If they're saying, there, there's talent here and there's time here, we, we need to do more. And if that's part of the, the opportunity that she's seeing somewhere else, yeah, maybe that's part of the discussion. We're saying, this is, this is it. And we're ready to go with this. What we had was good enough and, and was covered well enough. And it was challenging enough. Then, then we didn't know that. Corey, you were starting to say something. Um, all I wanted to mention is keep in mind that next year's election year, and it's going to get swamped, and with this new um, early voting thing, we're going to be we're going to be bombarded in the office. Um, it's going to probably get to the point where I was going to recommend that we actually hire another person temporarily on top of this person to come in and assist in the office during that time because we were swamped um, during election season. But then on another note with your your comment about um, Lori growing. Yes, there was definitely opportunities for growth and to assisting Liz further. Um, I want to say that I, I think that um, what kind of scared her away was Mary's proposal to have her going out and doing code enforcement. She didn't sign on for nothing like that, and she would have never, even if she didn't have a job and that was proposed, she would have walked without a job because that was never described of having an office staff person go to people's houses to do code enforcement. You know, so you now you want to revise this job description. Well, if that's what you want, you better put it in now and let's see how many applicants you get for it. But I think that this position could definitely help with Liz, especially with uh, now that she's going to do in-house lot splits and stuff, which we used to do in the past anyways. But there are going to be times where the position is going to get bombarded when developments start coming into the city again. You know, it has been slow. And I have to, I have to say, developments haven't been happening. Um, Requests haven't been happening the way that they have in the past, but there will be a time that it's going to get bombarded. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Rango. Uh, to come to City Clerk Ladoucher's comment, um, my my draft was a draft for discussion. It never had Lori going out to a home by herself. It was always with an elected official. But she would have never went out with even an elected official. And, that was and, not a position. Okay, that, and that and that something that Lori could have come to me and said something. I think it should have yeah. been you going to staff yeah. and saying, you know, I'm thinking about this. What is your well, what my, is your thought on that? My, my goal was to enhance her position because of comments I had heard that um, she needed more challenge, mm -hmm. and that's what I was attempting to do and to try to save the city some money by not having our planner in the process from the get-go. And I... So, Corey, what would you recommend for uh, a, 
a wage scale or a starting wage or? Well, there was several different, but I contacted some different cities to kind of get an idea of what they were paying. Um, Lori was well below that to even start. And it's not the first time that this has been brought up to the council as far as your compensation range is not even not even in the realm of what other communities are paying for the same position. I mean, if you look at our range, it's sixteen dollars and forty three cents to twenty dollars and twenty eight cents. Some of these other communities are starting even way over that. Okay. And do we have a comparison of? I mean, I don't doubt that other cities are paying more, but do we have a comparison as to job functions? No, because no city is going to have their deputy clerk all doing the same thing. <coughs> I mean, her job, I'm sure, over at St. Francis is different than what she was doing here, even. Oh, for sure. You know, I mean, they're all going to be have some different different things going on with them. But do we even know their, I mean, what would be the commonalities of what we have as um, duties versus the, the cities that you gave us, which is Columbus and Mora? Well, those were just a couple communities that I had checked with to get uh, basically a range of what um, they were paying for their deputy clerks. And, and I understand that, but again, do we know of these two cities that responded, the responsibilities of their deputy clerk, how do they mirror, and, and what percentage even mirrors what we require of a I deputy have clerk? I to say a lot of the deputy clerks are still doing a lot of the same type of okay. things, but I know some of the positions don't require them to attend meetings. Some of them don't even attend, it, 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 um, don't even get involved with the planning and zoning stuff. Some cities have their own administrative assistant in the planning and zoning department. So I guess it depends on how the city structures that particular position. S smaller the city, the, the bigger range of things you'll be doing. Mm -hmm. City of Columbus seems to be in the middle between the between our existing one and the Moro one. Mm -hmm. so that'd probably be a good range to start with. My recollection is when we were doing the interviewing process last time, the starting wages that were being asked for were at, if not above, our maximum, what we're showing on our range now. Do you recall that? I know in the case of Lori, it was. Well, we actually. Lori was we, actually. We, we were looking at 18. But everybody that we, or most people we interviewed, were. Asking for a range higher than what our maximum is. And Lori, we but actually. But they're asking got, higher than the 18. I don't know. I don't know if they were asking for. I mean, some of them, some of the originals we asked for were asking for the moon. But. Well, because, Corey, maybe you can answer this question, but the first person that we offered the job was over 20. Yes, I believe so, yeah. I think she was over 24, wasn't she? No. 
Not that. She, I, I don't think was. it was that much, but it was over our max. I, I know thought that. She, I thought she was $4 an hour over what we were. I didn't were. think so. Wait, I could be wrong, but wait, I didn't think so. Wait, we were offering 18 at the time, so. No, Lori, we did, not the first one. Well, but, but the ad we had was, was 18. Correct, but again, the, the first position that we offered was over, it over our max. Was it? No, it wasn't that, but it was over our max, and Lori, we got in. She accepted a little under that, but again, that shows you that that range is. Especially when you see some areas, what, bumping their minimum wage up to, what, 15? It's barely above the minimum wage requirements here pretty quick. Well, 925, what do you want to do? I believe Corey needs a position, so I, I'd like to make a motion to approve her to post it at the range more comparable to what Columbus is. I'll second that. Discussion. Motion to second. So. Mr. Mayor, so so in the posting, you you give a salary range. Mm -hmm. I I don't know how we compare to Columbus. Though. Again, you, you don't we don't have any. Responsibilities there. They said it's been a very busy year in Columbus. Uh, they've got a, a step 21 to 26. Well, again, we just lost an employee that we invested a considerable amount of time in for considerably more than that. We're somewhere in size for as far as population. We're really close. To be the same as Columbus. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Right. But do we know for sure that that Lori left just because of money? So if, if we don't know that, we can't just say that that's why she left. I'm not saying that was just we, why she left. I'm but saying you, but you we're hiring hired somebody because of our pay scale. Because the fact that. You know, after what a year and a half here, she started somewhere at a lot more than what she was making here. You know, doing supposedly some of the same role. Well, that, so then we just can't say, well, that we want to hire someone at a different rate just because, and that's why we lost our current clerk, our deputy clerk. Well, I know for a fact part of the reason she left was because of pay. So, there, I'll say that. Is that enough? If it's part of it, that's part of it, but not all of it. Not necessarily all of it. That's why I'm just trying to understand. And I'm not saying to use the range that I heard, have heard that she's getting at St. Francis. I'm, we're still under considerably where she said she was getting at it, the increase at St. Francis. So, But she has much different job responsibilities there, too. And more co complicated, detailed. One of the things we, we did last time when we were getting people in here, and I, we, do you remember how many applicants we had, 60? Yeah. I, I don't think that, you know, Governor Benger said we had trouble hiring them at the rate we offered. Um, that didn't seem to be a problem. We had, we had more people trying to get in, and our, our poster rate was 18. I think that when we did, indicate commensurate on experience, we would be willing to adjust it. And so I, I don't want to go in guaranteeing higher, a whole lot higher, um, but I'd be willing to adjust it 
if we find a candidate that the experience definitely um, So can I just ask it. one thing? Can we at least move forward with approving to post this and we can put salary depending on qualifications? I think that's reasonable. <coughs> and then we don't have to sit here for another half an hour deciding on what the range is going to be? I, I need to get this thing posted if we're going to start. Um, and then we can talk about a range next month when we start seeing some candidates coming in. But most candidates want to see that salary range in the posting. Yeah, I know that. I know. Well, it's certainly public information. They can... They're worth their salt, they're going to investigate it anyway. <coughs> but you can't give them something that you, get, you don't have. Again, come and say, here's what I'm making, here's what I need, and here's why I'm, here's why I'm worth it. You know, it was one of the things I think was the, the top cans we had last time, that's what they brought us. Here's why I'm worth it. It was part of the questions that we... We asked, they said, here's, here's what I'm making, here's why I'm worth this, and here's what I'm willing to work for, here's, here's what I'm not willing to work for. And I think if, if a salary uh, based on qualifications, or based on experience, is a reasonable place to start. Corey has no issues posting it that way, I don't either. Pardon? If you have no issues posting it that way, you get it posted, I don't either. Just... I mean, is in the meantime, we're going to get Columbus's job description. I can get the other one. I can even probably get the one in St. Francis. Um, they're all going to be a little bit different, but I'm telling you, the range... And this argument has been in the past. This range is too low. It always has been. Um, you guys talked about hiring that service to do job evaluations and pay evaluations, and I think that you should have moved forward with it because I don't think the ranges are correct. And that's an administrator analysis, by the way. All right. We have a motion that's been amended. Randy, do you uh, still second that motion? Yeah. Motion. Do you post accordingly? Do you know how long we want to get into? Well, uh, what did we do last time? Well, it could have been three weeks. But I mean, it's going to be with Christmas here. It's going to be tough. Uh, two weeks from Christmas. Well, you're still two weeks before Christmas. Christmas was two weeks yesterday. Okay. So, I'm just saying Christmas and New Year's week. Do um, you want to give them until... So if you did that. Like the 12th? Of January. Mm -hmm. So, motion and second. Any other discussion? Seeing and hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. So, Corey, in the meantime, between now and whenever, do you need some temporary assistance? Well, at times, yes. Um, what's going to be coming up is uh, um, urine stuff. W-2s, all the quarter reports need to be done next month. So that, that's going to take some time and since the um, IRS changed it so that all W-2s have to be done and administered to the Secretary or the Social Security Office by the end of January, that does take some time. That's something do. you do? Yeah. You wouldn't have them do that? No. Nope. So, so with that in mind, would a receptionist I gotta go back to just because I'm right now I'm finding a lot of good people through agencies. 
but a receptionist type person. Yes. Be reasonable. And can I have some people that I work with contact you? Yeah, if, you, if the council's okay to hire somebody, but then we're also talking about what do you want to pay them. Well, I would, I would say that we keep it within the compensation we had for Lori. I, I think on a, on a contract basis, you can, you can keep it within her total compensation. Actually paying the contract service that amount. So if we can keep it within what we're compensating Lori with their fees. And again, that's a package for Lori. I mean, there are certain benefits here. I don't think I'm do everything we're asking Lori to do. I think we're central competent receptionist and basic financial. We don't even have to get into that. It's even simple things, issuing burning permits. They have a whole stack of job licenses that have to be issued. So work with Corey on that. We can find somebody administrative. At that point, we would know how many applicants we had, and it may help us all to decide to move forward with interviews and stuff like that. The council's gave us the ninth rather than twelfth. Those on camera, everybody nodded their head yes. <laughs> yes. So, Mr. Mayor, just pointing out, there's I don't there's still over five thousand dollars set aside for part-time employees for the rest of the year. But again, we would be using what we had were budgeted for Lori, so yeah. we wouldn't have to run it well, part time. It gives us some it's flexibility. There. I mean, if Corey finds somebody who likes and it's close, we have some part time monies. So let me ask this to the council. If, if Corey finds somebody within this, through an agency here that, that she likes, but it's slightly higher than uh, total compensation for Lori because of the fee the agency. Would we okay using those other part-time funds to the end of the year? They can generally find somebody pretty quickly. Yes. As long as Corey can keep it within budget. Mm -hmm. All right. So I see all nodded heads. Yes. So yes. Again, so. Yes. Yes. All right. M Mr. Mayor. Do we want to um, consider, as we did last time, having um, a committee of two to work with Corey um, in regards to looking at the applications, doing the interviews? I think we should discuss it at our next workshop. That, uh, we'll know the information by the meeting, and we can make that decision at the time. Right. I think it worked pretty well. I think as a team, because we were flexible during the day, um, and we were able to screen pretty well. I, I thought it worked well doing that. Paul, Corey, you agree? So. All right. Do we have a motion to vote on yet? Yeah, we did. We had a yep. motion and a second. Yeah, we haven't voted it, don't we? We haven't voted, no. Yeah. Any other discussion? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion to adjourn. Meeting adjourned. Huh? Yes, you